everything about Farmer Maggot. So a while back, my friend Dominic Noble made a video where, spoiler alert, he talked about how Farmer Maggot's character is so different in the movie that he doesn't even qualify as the same character from the book. Basically, his qualm was that Farmer Maggot in the movie is a sniveling worm, and Farmer Maggot in the book is a tough badass who stands up to the ringwraith sternly. Now, Dom is absolutely correct that Farmer Maggot's portrayal in the movie is not consistent with Farmer Maggot's portrayal in the book. Here's the thing. Farmer Maggot's portrayal in the movie isn't even consistent with Farmer Maggot's portrayal in the same movie. Like, clearly. Clearly, this is supposed to be Farmer Maggot. He's got the dog, and he has the exchange with the Ringwraith. But then, later, in the scene where he's actually named, his voice is a completely different person. And this is the one where his attitude is much closer to his attitude towards the Ringwraith in the book. Honestly, he should just always be portrayed like this. Yeah. Oi! Go back to where you came from, you! Got a tall English breakfast tea for Farmer Maggot? Oi! Give me that beverage there, you! Oi! Let me into the group there, you! For the last time, you're technically in the movie. You don't belong here. Love you, honey. I'll see you at home. All right. Welcome to the support group for Lord of the Rings characters left out of the movies. Now, eliminating the part where Maggot stands up to the Ringwraith is a shame because it was an early example of the book's theme of ordinary people standing up to evil. And in the text, we would later find out that Farmer Maggot is far from the only hobbit willing to stand up to evil. Although some of the others needed a little help. We'll get to that. Still, while it's sad to lose this specific example of the theme, it's a theme the movies fortunately do not ignore elsewhere. I mean, Galadriel drives it home pretty explicitly. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. But I think the biggest thing Maggot's adaptation from book to movie loses is, ironically, the sense of loss he represents for Frodo. In the movie, Merry and Pippin steal from him because they're wacky comic relief, but in the book, Merry and Pippin are actually very good friends with Farmer Maggot. Frodo used to steal from him when he was a small child, and he's been so scared of him ever since that he hasn't dared set foot on his property or meet him again as an adult. But now Frodo realizes that he and Maggot could have been very good friends this whole time, and it hits hard for him what he's losing now that he's saying goodbye to the Shire, possibly forever. The missed opportunity for this relationship is a reflection of everything he's losing by going on this quest. Frodo says he'll come back if he can, and Maggot says he'll be welcomed back with open arms, never knowing that Frodo's planning on leaving for good. It's a small but heartbreaking moment. But, you know, in the movie version, we got a joke where the hobbits almost land in poop, so trade-off. Ooh, that was close. But okay, including the Farmer Maggot episode as it appears in the book would be a little bit of a long diversion for this point in the movie, and I don't dislike Merry and Pippin as comic relief characters, and I understand the arc of showing them being irresponsible early on so they can have their growth on the quest. Fine. So I understand the function of this scene in the movie, and I can be persuaded that it's worth having this way. So then I just have one question about it. How the hell does Sam know who Farmer Maggot is? If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. You've been into Farmer Maggot's crop! I guess Sam just knows everything about every farm that he's never set foot anywhere near before? I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to just spend all his time studying maps only of farmland, but still, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.